Have you ever wondered where it all began? I mean, really began? Not just the universe, but everything, existence, causality, even time itself. This profound question has puzzled philosophers and scientists for millennia, leading them down a rabbit hole of thought known as the infinite regress problem. Imagine a chain with no end, stretching back infinitely. Each link represents a cause, an event, or a reason always preceded by another and another ad infinitum. This is the essence of infinite regress, a relentless chain of antecedents with no conceivable starting point. From the smallest subatomic particle to the grandest cosmic structure, the question of origins looms large. What caused the Big Bang? What existed before the universe as we know it? These questions, while seemingly straightforward, quickly devolve into the dizzying abyss of infinite regress. Every answer seems to beget another question, each cause demanding a preceding cause with no end in sight. The human mind, hardwired to seek patterns and explanations, struggles to grasp the concept of infinity. We crave closure, a definitive beginning or end, but infinite regress, like the vastness of space itself, defies our intuition, leaving us both fascinated and deeply unsettled. Let's break down this abstract concept with a simple example. Imagine asking a child why the sky is blue. They might respond, because the air scatters blue light more than other colors. Fair enough. But then you ask, why does air scatter blue light? They answer, because of how sunlight interacts with molecules in the atmosphere. You press further. And why is that? You see where this is going. Each answer, while valid, merely pushes the explanation back a step, demanding yet another why. This is the essence of infinite regress, an endless chain of explanations or justifications, each relying on a prior one, without ever reaching a fundamental starting point. It's like asking what holds up the Earth, only to be told it rests on the back of a giant turtle, which stands on another turtle, and so on, all the way down. This problem isn't limited to scientific explanations. It permeates logic, mathematics, and even our daily decision-making. Why did I choose to eat cereal this morning? Because I was hungry. And why was I hungry? Because I hadn't eaten in several hours. And why is that? You get the picture. Infinite regress challenges our ability to establish foundational principles. If every explanation requires a prior explanation, then how can we ever claim to truly understand anything? This is the crux of the problem. It undermines our quest for fundamental truths and casts doubt on the very notion of ultimate explanations. The concept of infinite regress is far from new. Ancient Greek philosophers grappled with this very issue, recognizing its implications for understanding the nature of reality. Aristotle, for instance, famously argued against infinite regress in his quest to identify the first cause of the universe. He believed that there must be an uncaused cause, a prime mover, to set the cosmos in motion. This prime mover, according to Aristotle, was not itself set in motion by anything else. It existed outside the realm of cause and effect, a necessary exception to break free from the infinite regress trap. This concept resonated deeply within Western thought, influencing philosophical and theological discussions for centuries. Medieval theologians, grappling with the question of God's existence, found solace in Aristotle's prime mover. They saw it as a way to reconcile the idea of an eternal, uncreated God with the seemingly endless chain of cause and effect we observe in the universe. While the prime mover offered a solution to the infinite regress problem, it also raised new questions about the nature of this first cause and its relationship to the universe it set in motion.